125 for the Z-Max Car Store, presented by Soundgear. Want an easy way to help take care of your vehicle? Z-Max Micro Lubricant. Z-Max Micro Lubricant is a DIY solution that pours into your fuel and oil. Z-Max proprietary molecules are uniquely small, so they literally soak into the metal, dispersing harmful carbon deposits. This improves horsepower, extends engine life, and reduces emissions. Z-Max is good for your car, your wallet, and the environment. Can be used in newer used vehicles. Available at ZMAX.com or your local auto parts store. Every weekend, it seems like we're at a racetrack somewhere, so we're living it, we're doing it. And I think it helps us relate whenever they call, if they need more grip or they need more turn. We, we do it all the time. All of the fixtures we do from our steering dyno to our rear end straightening jig, it's the same fixture, same tools that we would build a rear end housing that's going to run a NASCAR race as we do a rack or, or a, a steering box to go on a street stop. We treat them all the same way because, I mean, they deserve the same quality. Everybody does. Everyone knows that in stock car racing, every second matters, and you have to have the right fuel so your car can run at maximum efficiency. It's the same way with our bodies. What we consume can make or break our health. So that's why I take Velasta, the most powerful natural antioxidant on the planet. It's like juicing a thousand carrots, a thousand tomatoes, and over 1,200 cups of blueberries per day. It helps give me the energy I need to get back to doing what I love. So take control of your health. Take Velasta. See many of the fans that are standing alongside the track that have a wonderful vantage point up there in turns one and two at Southern National Motorsports Park. And Eric, just as it was last year when we were here one year ago, all the way wrapped around this facility, cars, trucks, tailgaters, everybody out here having a good time. The fans have come out in droves 
to see this Kevin says yes dot com one twenty five. Yeah, even though this wasn't the original plan for us to be here on a Sunday afternoon, it sounds like some drivers may prefer this. We heard Brendan Butter being Queen say that earlier in his pre race hit that racing here on a Sunday afternoon has gone pretty well for him. He actually did that last November, won the Thanksgiving All Star Classic. Many drivers hoping for that as well. Uh, also hoping that it kind of adds a little bit more of a slickness to this facility, if you will, that appears to be present whether the sun is shining on it or not. But as you mentioned, the fans have certainly come out here. And trackside parking is always going to be one of my favorite fan amenities at any short track or any racetrack you could find. And it's hard to find any voids that aren't purposefully left open all the way around this four-tenths of a mile oval. And yes, it is filled to capacity here all the way around this racetrack. And shout out to these fans for, for coming out again on a delay. And, you know, I think a lot of work was done with both Southern National Motorsports Park, their entire speed weeks of which they have been running divisions all week long. And, a, and an exciting idea here in the southeast to try and run speed weeks here at one track. But a, a great you know, tip of the cap to everybody at this racetrack and with the Z-Max Cars Tour, I think, for their early call yesterday because I live nearby about an hour away in Raleigh. We were not going to race here yesterday by any stretch of the imagination. It, it rained all day, but several days in advance, the call was made to push this date out to Sunday, and I think with all the heads up of both these race fans and everybody, we didn't have to come here and sit in the rain, not run any practice and not run a race. Uh, a tip of the cap to everybody for making an early call, saving these race teams a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money and hotel expenses and all of that. Tour did a great job, and I think the fans have responded in kind with this beautiful day that we see out here on Sunday. And perhaps the biggest downside to a race getting pushed forward is not only do we as race fans have to wait an extra 24 hours to watch the race unfold, but the drivers and teams, they have to stress another night as to if they made the right decisions, they make the right changes or adjustments. Qualifying was a good barometer as we saw Chad McCombie take the Thunder Road Harley-Davidson Pole Award about an hour ago uh, from now, and he's going to have an opportunity perhaps to win his second career race, but many of these teams still possibly wondering, maybe even a little bit sleep deprived, as we did that funny <laughs> thing with the yeah, clocks last drive. night, as we sprung ahead for an hour. Uh, but with that in mind, I mean, it gave teams an extra opportunity to agonize over whether or not they're heading in the right direction for what will be the tone setting race of this season at one of the toughest racetracks we visit. Well, and I think he, that was present, and even Trevor Ward saw a picture of him driving down I 85 after Friday. They brought that car home they wanted to do so much work on it rather than leaving it uh, locked up here in the trailer over Saturday's course of events. Well, as you can see, cars are starting to roll out onto the facility. The Kevin says yes .com 125 is just around the corner here on Flow Racing. Hendrick. It's the perfect time to find an affordable vehicle. Visit HendrickCars.com and shop our large selection, including over 1,000 vehicles priced under 20 grand. Plus, drive today but pay later with our payment deferral and zero down options. Buy from the name you know and trust. Hendrick has received over 650,000 five star online reviews. Over 1,000 vehicles under 20 grand. Find yours at HendrickCars.com. Lessen the noise of the track, not the rush of the race. With Sound Gear, hearing protection solutions that lap the competition. Perfect for racers, crew, fans, or anyone who works or plays in loud places. Sound Gear, official hearing protection sponsor of ZMAX Cars Tour. Sound Gear, ready for anywhere sound is a problem.
Welcome back to Flow Racing. Standing by with Kevin Powell. He is sponsoring the Kevin Says Yes 125 today for the Cars Tour. Kevin, this is your first time coming on board with the tour. First off, thank you so much for your partnership. But tell us a little bit about how this all came together. Well, Mike Diaz and I have been become friends over the years through racing. We're really excited to be here with the Car Max, Car Z Max Tour um, and Mike at the, at the Southern National Park. KevinSaysYes.com. If you need a car or motorcycle, we'd love to have you visit Kevin says yes.com and we want to say a special shout out to our friend Zach Brewer that we lost this week and hope everyone enjoys the uh, race here at home on flow now you talk a little bit about your relationship with Mike Diaz have you been a race fan historically yeah we used to drive here in the modified division late model division way back in the day here at Kenley so this is a, a fun race track for when I used to race at and then we've had the modified here that we race at on the uh, the smart tour too yeah, it's definitely a cool racetrack. Well, thank you so much again for your partnership. It looks like we might have all the cars lined up, and we do. So we're going to get us kicked off for the Kevin Says Yes 125. Without further ado, we're going to pass it over to you, Mr. Kevin Powell, and the girls with Z-Max. Crazy Kevin Powell says drivers, start, start your engines. engines. Thank you, Jacqueline. Well, it is finally time here, Eric. We've been waiting several months to see these late model stock cars get fired up. They are all lined up. We sent four of them home, but all of them are ready to get this 2024 season started. Different agendas for all of these drivers, several of which are going to be running with us full time here in the tour in 2024. But I think you even look at that one car and Clay Jones may not be running the full schedule for us, but I think he's definitely somebody that we'll be talking about towards the end of this race. How about the week that Brendan Butterbean Queen has had? You got a quick glimpse of him there in that 03 car. Just announced that he will be driving the Tricon Garage truck in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series at a place where he already knows how to find Victory Lane, North Wilkesboro. As the field begins to roll off, Chad McCombie and Brent Cruz are going to make up the front row for this race after McCombie lay claim to the Thunder Road Harley Davidson pole a couple hours ago. Cruz, the young gun for Kevin Harvick Incorporated right alongside. Connor Hall and Caden Honeycutt going to start in row number two as well. Hall with Nelson Motorsports for the first time this season and Honeycutt, a runner up here at the Thanksgiving All-Star Classic last November. Back in row three, a couple of hot shoes here in both Trayton and Lapsovich. The contrast between young drivers and veteran experience in Deke McCaskill start at the outside of row number three. Further on back in row four, the two-time defending Z-Max Cars Tour champion and Carson Quapel, along with Ryan Millington. Not sure that 15 team is going to be able to fly under the radar here in 2024. How about the muscle that we have in row number five? Runner up in points last season in Butterbean Queen and three-time champion Bobby McCarty back for his second go of it with RNS race cars in that six. Saw Honeycutt pulled down there for just a moment, but looks like he's got that car fired up and away. As we look back here at row six, I think a lot of optimism with this row and both of these drivers and Mini Tyrell gaining some confidence after last season. And Cade Brown, who I think is going to take the tour by storm this season. Back in row number seven, uh, we mentioned Clay Jones, uh, Wake County Speedway champion. Going to line up on the inside, outside of that of Andrew Grady, who is back for another year in car store competition, this time with the TG Motorsports entry in the number one. And a solid run here for Logan Clark. Been getting a lot more seat time. Again, started about halfway through last year for RNS Race Cars, putting together a full-time effort this season, along with Jamie Cottle, who has his, about as many laps at this racetrack as anybody in the starting field today. Inside of row number nine, Katie Hedinger trying to become the first female driver ever to win in Cars Tour competition. And outside, Mason Diaz. What a story it would be for him, filling in for the injured Jared Fryer. Not sure how much we'll see Diaz this season, but he's He's got an opportunity here at a racetrack that is his home. And again, Cameron Bolin just further on back, defending Rookie of the Year in 2023, set to go here this afternoon, as well as Bryce Applegate. Part-time effort for him that may turn into a full-time. We'll see, but he'll be starting from 20th. Ryan Wilson Motorsports got John Goyne inside of row 11. Now Chase Burrow was slated to start outside. He was sent to the rear due to unapproved adjustments. Back in 23rd and 24th, Lane Riggs said we're going to have to go to Costco and wholesale change this thing after Friday's practice. He may have a tough road up today from 23rd and 24th between he and Bochelle. 
We see the rest of our starters here as they continue to roll through the field here behind the Hendrick cars.com pace vehicle as our chief starter Brandon Willard is going to give the one to go signal we are a lap away from getting 2024 underway here at Southern National Motorsports Park again so much to talk about up here at the front of the field Chad McCombie was very open and honest about the changes that he felt his program had made over the course of the offseason he shows that muscle immediately by winning the Thunder Road Harley Davidson pole award but I think Brent Cruz, Connor Hall, Caden Honeycutt, and several more in the field are going to be ones that he's going to have to contend with over the course of this 125-lap race. For the first time in 2024, the HendrickCars.com pace car will dive down to the safety of the pit lane, and the field will be in the hands of Chad McCombie through the Death Wish Coffee Start Zone, and the 2024 season in the Kevin Stitz, yes, com 125 is underway, and they are side-by-side -side down the back straightaway to come around and try to lead lap number one. They're almost leaning on each other already as McCombie looks like he'll just edge him out at the line to lead his first lap since New River a year ago. Youth versus experience. Experience is going to win out on that battle to start this race. McCombie to the lead. Cruz not allowing him to get away. They've got a considerable margin considering we're coming around a complete lap two. Over the third place. Oh, runner trouble. contact. That's Quapple, the champion, up into the side of McCaskill as they came together on the front stretch. And that may be the first issue that we have seen here, Eric. Again, last season it was not a DNF once for that number eight car, but there is definitely some heavy damage on the right front fender of the Bass Pro stop Chevrolet and one of the favorites in Deke McCaskill you can see the damage that he has on the left hand side of his RNS race car. McCaskill there a four time pole winner three time race winner here including last year here's what happened right side of your picture as they come down the front straightaway. And McCaskill yeah you can see he's wow. trying to dive down and just get underneath Trayton Lapsovich. Makes a little bit of contact, and the fact that that did not bring out our first shitty coolers caution of the season, I don't know how that didn't happen. That could have been a massive wreck if those two didn't have the experience they did to keep it straight. They continue on and remain at anger in terms of pace with Quapple running in sixth, McCaskill behind him in seventh as the field now comes off turn number four, and they start to accordion back together with Connor Hall in third, and then Caden Honeycutt in that 17 car in fourth, Rounding out the top five currently is the 77 of Trayton Lapsovich. Bid for the lead. And already almost contact up here at the front of the field. McCombie will give the young gun necessary space there down on the bottom. And at the line, it's going to be a dead heat between your top two. Brent Cruz going to be able to go through for the race lead as McCombie slots in line just behind Connor Hall, who had fallen back a couple of car lengths in the opening few laps of this race. He's found his way back up to these top two and running in the third position, but new leader here with 117 to go. It's the young hot shoe and Brent Cruz. Perhaps the old adage of you don't know what you don't know is going to pay off for that youngster, being that all the field is on that new compound of Hoosier Tire. The S2 this is the first time we've seen it in Cars Tour competition in terms of race pace. Cruz now out to a healthy lead as we drop back to a battle here between Andrew Grady and the 1, the 15 on the outside, Ryan Millington in the black car, and that South Carolina 400 winner, Cade Brown from Matt Piercy Racing trying to keep the fender inside. I think checking up just a bit, but you could see the left front fender on the apron onto the flat for Cade Brown. Kind of shades of what Chris Wright went through a little bit last week in the pro late model race, having some saves and having to use a little bit of that apron down there to try and make some ground up as the entire field single file on the bottom right now. And again, they've done a lot of work here at this racetrack. You can see the freshly paved asphalt up at the top that was put in place before the Thanksgiving Classic last year. But Eric, it seems like for now, that bottom groove is where these cars like to run. One other element we've talked about several times in terms of Cars Tour races is that of a potential of a competition caution. As we saw last week, as we got a battle for second starting to shape up here, that's Connor Hall to the inside of Chad McCombie, and Hall has the preferred line on the bottom. He'll take second. 45 consecutive green flag laps is what will bring out a shitty cooler's caution, and we will not see that potential competition yellow if we are within the final 15 laps, but it will be the first time we've ever seen a choose option here in Cars Tour competition at Southern National. We didn't have that rule in place last year. You can see why everybody wants the bottom. I think we're starting to see kind of this mentality all play out as Quapple and Lapsovich almost had a tangle there out of turn number two. And, and 
what we were going to mention, Eric, is the fact that, you know, we heard a lot of pre-race, these ST2 tires. Are you going to have to save quite as much? Is there just as much fall-off as there was? Is there the ability to save and then drive through the field at the end? At least from what we can see out the window, it was pretty easy a year to go to see the Jacob Hefners, the Ronnie Bassett Juniors of the world, who were really conservative early on in these races with saving their stuff. It's definitely not as much of a factor right now. You can see Cruz continuing to drive away from this field. But as far as track position is concerned, I'm not seeing a whole lot of patience, especially up here in the top five. And Quapple, who's trying to get back back around Trayton Lapsovich. It was interesting. Once Quapple started to apply pressure to Lapsovich, he in turn started to heat up the back bumper of Caden Honeycutt's number 17 just up the road. If you're not familiar with Trayton Lapsovich, you're going to be. He's your reigning NASCAR Canada Series champion. In fact, joined brother Caden as be, being able to take the top honors in that series that runs north of the border. He now knows this is a place where he could impress, turn some heads, and he's doing it with a team that has been very strong. That's a Chad Bryant racing injury, and they went to victory lane with Connor Hall last season. We'll see what Trayton can do in 2024. He's off to a really good start running up there towards the front. Uh, you can still see that damage on the left rear fender of Deke McCaskill's car. You can see some smoke billowing out on a battle that is still taking place between the two eights. Carson Quapel in the white Bass Pro Shops 8 Chevrolet. And Deke McCaskill, who many talked about heading into this race, Eric, is not a favorite, but the favorite to win this race. Won it a year ago, has four wins and seven starts in the Cars Tour at Southern National Motorsports Park. You'd have to imagine that damage is not going to help his efforts. You can really see it up off the corner, how much that fender is flaring out on the straightaways. Here's Quapel on the inside of Lapsovich, and Trayton slammed the door. That was about the second time that Carson almost had that right front fender ripped off his Junior Motorsports number eight, and he is letting Trayton know he's not that happy about it. Looks inside again as they go to one. And Lapsovich going to shut the door once again. You have to wonder how aggressive Quapel is going to be here against somebody that exudes so much patience in the past that we've seen. He knows he has a fast race car, and he knows how to place it where he needs to be to get where he needs to go. But here at Southern National Motorsports Park, it's why we see a lot of accidents on corner entry. Everybody fighting for the bottom if you get a little bit of a run. And actually, it was just up the road. Caden Honeycutt in the Pro Late Model race a week ago pretty much had the exact same thing happen when he was trying to pass Tyler Tanner early on for the race lead. Got a little bit of a run. But as you can see, you got to be aggressive because everybody is lined up. And poor Ryan Millington, I feel like he's been on the outside now for about 15 laps. Yeah, this almost reminds you of what the old school Bristol Motor Speedway used to be like, where once you get kicked up out of that bottom lane, you're not going to be able to find a way back down unless you either force your way in there or get lucky enough to have your spotter help find you a void. That's what Bryce Applegate's dealing with right now on the outside of that white number 45 with the reigning rookie of the year, Cameron Bolden, looking to the bottom, trying to follow Katie Hedinger through 67 and 71 respectively. Opening 25 laps have gone off without too much of a hitch. Knock on wood. Well, hopefully we won't change that as we continue to see Millington falling through the field is that is not Jared Fryer in that number 14, who, by the way, is celebrating his 30th birthday. So, Jared, if you're watching out there on Flow Racing, happy birthday. Is Mason Diaz behind the wheel of that number 14 machine. It was an accident uh, that required surgery on his leg, did that of Jared Fryer, that put him out of the running as he planned to run a full-time effort here in the Cars Tour 2024. Mason Diaz, for the moment, filling in. Could be for this race or perhaps a little bit longer, but what a story it would be if Diaz at the track that he worked set for so long could manage to go to victory lane. As we see Lane Riggs, who has been struggling with his number 62 KHI Ford all weekend long, trying to make some progress. Riggs going to be able to make the pass around the number 45 of Applegate. It was not been able to get down just yet. All the while, Brent Cruz continues to try to nurse what is, I'll call it a half a straightaway advantage, as now Trayton Lapsovich has gotten kicked up off the bottom. And even with the contact between that of Carson Quapo, as we got a battle for second yet again, McCombie gave up the spot a handful of laps ago. Now he's pressuring the backside of Connor Hall in the backstretch. And again, this is all taking place about half a straightaway behind the number 29 Mobile One Toyota of Brent Cruz. And you can see a lot of respect between these two. It's, it's hard to call them veterans, but I think you made the point earlier. You can consider Connor Hall in that number 22 a veteran for now. Same with Chad McCombie. And I think you see the difference between that and some of the younger drivers in the field. A lot of space, a lot of respect given. Chad McCombie let Connor Hall go. And 
Connor Hall returns the favor a little bit later. So you young racers out there, keep that in mind. You get raced how you race others. Lessons to be learned for sure as the battle for third now starts to accordion back together. How about Caden Honeycutt in that number 17 for Tom Busby Racing? This team has jumped on board with Honeycutt, who has a very full plate of racing competition under his belt for 2024. Ran a couple of NASCAR crafts, but truck series races for Nice Motorsports. Ran the Pro Late Model race here last week, finished third. But this team has rallied around this young man. They've got merchandise available to commemorate his efforts in this car. And he came up one spot shy of a Thanksgiving All-Star Classic victory here last November in what was a slugfest between he, eventual winner Brendan Butterbean Queen, and Josh Berry, who was in the KHI number 62 that afternoon. He's trying to get one spot better to find cookout victory lane as it's pretty hard to imagine, Blake, that that eluded him last year despite his success yeah. in his partial season. You're certainly right. And talking to Caden yesterday, there were a lot of teams, Eric, who were not so happy with the handling of their race cars after Friday's practice. And Caden was one of the few that I talked to that said, we have got this figured out. We are going to be good this weekend. And every time that I spoke with Caden last year, he said we got a good race car. He did not disappoint. One thing, though, you really see it on that speed shot there. Did not see it in qualifying. We saw a couple cars that were almost scraping the outside wall. That low exit off of turn four, indicative, I believe, of these drivers at least trying to save a little bit of this brand new Hoosier ST2 tire. It's a really good point, Blake, as we see this fight just not going away. This is third on back. Brent Cruz is just about checked out and is riding just fast enough to not catch the tail end of the field. As you see here, Connor Hall in the 22, Kate Nunnicutt in the 17. There's Carson Quapple in the 8, Deke McCaskill in the 08, who have survived their major contact in the opening few circuits. As Quapple looks down to the inside, Honeycutt's going to protect the spot. A little bit of contact there off of two. Quapple with a big launch off the second corner. Inside of Honeycutt, who tries to pinch him down. Quapple has had his hands full trying to get around some competition here. Honeycutt. I think going to try and find a hold down as we continue to see some smoke billowing off the right rear of that 0-8 per your tank lines forward. And Honeycutt, is he able to get down? Lapsovich is not going to let that happen. And unfortunately, the bleeding may just be starting for that number 17 win forward. Can he get down to the bottom? No. Brendan Queen is there. How about Mini Tyrell, who has made his way up a couple of spots since we dropped the green flag? Great run for that number 81. And had a long conversation with Timmy Tyrell earlier this morning and talked about the confidence that Mini has been trying to build over the course of the last year. It was it was a tough 2023 for Mini Tyrell in this 81 team where it didn't aspire to the goals that they had reached for themselves but certainly a confidence boost and a shot in the arm right now for Mini Tyrell running inside the top 10. How detrimental is it to get kicked up to that outside lane? Kate and Honeycutt went from running in a podium spot to 10th the last time they came around. In fact, he may have gotten kicked outside the top 10 as Andrew yeah. Grady is floating his way up towards the front early in this race. But it's been all Brent Cruz, who the car you see out the windshield at number 29 is Jacob Hefner for Carroll Speed Shop. This is exactly what Hefner did last year. He dropped to the back of the field, took his time, stayed on the lead lap, and then charged up to a top 10 finish late. I bet you that number 95 is going to stay right there up until the competition caution. Should we get 45 laps complete? And Hefner is certainly trying to save his stuff for the finish. Well, again, that would be just around the corner as we have run just about 45 laps to open up this race all good. And you can imagine that Hefner is probably going to at least back off a little bit. Again, we'll get a great vantage point to see if saving that much is worth it. But for the first time in 2024, Eric, the shitty coolers caution has been displayed here at Southern National Motorsports Park. Got a graphic for it and everything. I love <laughs> it. One of the uh, so many new fun partnerships in 2024. This is certainly one of them. They are all in. Be sure to use the hashtag shitty coolers caution. If you want to let us know that you're watching along and having as much fun as we are with their partnership. And I'm sure that after this race is over, many of us, race teams, drivers, they'll be reaching into their shitty coolers for a cold beverage after this one because it has been quite the weekend as Brent Cruz will now circulate behind the HendrickCars.com pace vehicle. One car has ducked to the pit lane, and that is the car that had to drop to the rear of the field in that of Chase Burrow. He is down there in the pits getting service. Jacqueline's down there. 